the anatomy of a trout stream is the key to catching trout because knowing where trout hold in a stream tells you where and how to fish for them. In the next hour, Rick Hayfley will help you understand trout streams. He'll tell you where trout hold in them, what trout feed on, and how to apply this information to the selection of the right flies and the best methods of presenting those flies to the right places so you'll catch more and larger trout. Food includes aquatic insects, terrestrial insects, and small aquatic crustaceans, such as these scuds. Trout set up feeding lies to take this small fare and wait for their food to breed. Big flies, like woolly buggers, are so effective. The most active feeding periods of trout are tied to periods of the greatest insect activity. That's why an understanding of aquatic insects and other trout foods and how to imitate them is so important if you're going to catch trout consistently. All of these insects are well adapted to living in fast water. Mayflies, like these clinger nymphs, are very flat, have eyes on top of their head, and large oval gills on the abdomen. Clinging mayflies hang on so well that they're normally available to fish only during a hatch, when they let go of the bottom and rise to the surface to emerge. These stonefly nymphs, for instance, when you hook him, all he does is sulk, you break your tippet, lose your fly. But he's a great help when it comes to understanding the anatomy of a trout stream. Remember, as we spot Henry in various lies and riffles, that the biggest trout will hold wherever most of its needs are met. Those will be Henry's favorite lies. Number 12 caddis larva tumble dead drift near the bottom, just like the natural does when it gets swept off the bottom in a riffle. Choose a fly pattern based on the size, shape, and color of the predominant insect and present the fly so it moves like the natural. An eight to nine does. foot rod allows you to control and mend your line easier than a short rod. And I like to use a reel with a smooth drag and large enough to hold your line plus about 50 yards of backing. Do you hook a fish in a riffle? It's probably going to head downstream. Oh, it's like a good rainbow. Oh, is he making a run downstream? He took that larva as it drifted down right behind that rock in that current seam. You want to make sure you can follow that strike indicator because it just hesitated slightly as that fish took. You really have to practice with these strike indicators. But once you get the feel for it, they can really be deadly. Yeah, well, he's, so he's about ready to come in. Okay, keep his head up. Good, rainbow. This is the pupa of the net spinning larva. It's a typical caddis pupa, and when it emerges in the fast water of a riffle, its legs, antenna, pupa and first wing along cases. the bottom, and then at the surface where the pupa struggle to break through the surface film. Trout take them there with quick, sometimes splashy 14, imitates it well. The antron yarn catches tiny bubbles of air. Ugh. Boy, he hit that pupa as it's rising to the surface with a real thud. Woo! That's what makes this so exciting when you're fishing these pupa. They just really come up and nail it. Now, he's not as big as Henry. In fact, I think Henry could make a good meal out of this guy, but... Ah, uh, brown trout. There he is. Caddis are easily recognized by their tent-shaped wings. They have long antennae and no tails. Shaking branches will quickly tell you if caddis adults are present. You can recognize them by their quick and erratic flight. One of the flight. best caddis fishing with dry flies occurs when adults are laying eggs. With two or three color and size variations of the elk hair, you can fish nearly any caddis hatch anywhere. He's got it! Sitting right in that slack water behind that boulder. Boy, in these riffles, that's one of the best places to find a fish. They'll sit back there and sip in that bugs that come down and cast right up in the top. Get your fly to come down with a nice drag-free float. And you can really catch some nice fish. Oh, it's rainbow. Yeah, okay. Let's get him in here. Come here. Ah, oh, handsome fellow, good 14 inches, 
Runs are important parts in the anatomy of most trout streams. They're deeper than ripples, from three to six feet deep, and generally have less drop and slower currents. Their bottoms often have large rocks and boulders. These crawler mayfly nymphs are often abundant in runs. They are awkward critters and can hardly swim. They're a favorite mouthful for trout. Pebble case caddis are also often abundant in runs. That was a nice fish. There he jumps, good jump. Oh, that's a dandy, beautiful fish. Woo! Yeah, took right down near the bottom. Nice rainbow. That wet tip line is really important too. It really helps get that fly near the bottom where the fish are at. I'm gonna bring him into the slow water right behind this. Right in the net. Congregate along banks, waiting their time to deposit eggs like this adult stonefly. Of course, a lot of terrestrials can be expected to fall into the water there, especially on warm, windy summer days. These include ants, grasshoppers, jacids, are the primary holding and feeding areas for the largest trout in a stream because their needs are all met there. The need for safety is met by the depth of the water. The need for comfort is met by the laziness of the current. The trout's need for food is satisfied in pools by things there that we go. bigger bucks. Well, that's a good one. Oh my gosh. Boy, they really take off on some runs in these deep pools sometimes. They don't jump too often. I'll tell you, they'll really burn your finger if you aren't careful. Over here in a little quieter water. Uh, he's going to stay out there in the bottom for a while. Sulking, that feels like a good fish. Over here in a little shallower water. From the bottom, that's oh, a brown trout. Oh, you never know what you're going to get from these pools when you're fishing these big streamers. Let's get him in the net here. Midges hatch in great numbers in the slow stage in the life